A panel painting is a painting made on a flat panel made of wood, either a single piece, or a number of pieces joined together, until canvas became the more popular support medium in the 16th century. It was the normal form of support for a painting not on a wall or vellum, which was used for miniatures in illuminated manuscripts and paintings for the framing. History a series of 6th century BC painted tablets from Pizza represent the oldest surviving Greek panel paintings. Most classical Greek paintings that were famous in their day seem to have been of a size comparable to smaller modern works, perhaps up to a half-length portrait size. However, for a generation in the second quarter of the 5th century BC there was a movement, called the New Painting, and led by Polygnotus for very large painted friezes, apparently painted on wood, decorating the interiors of public buildings with very large and complicated subjects containing numerous figures at at least half life size, and including battle scenes. We can only attempt to imagine what these looked like from some detailed literary descriptions and vase paintings that appear to echo their compositions. The 1st century BC to 3rd century AD Fayum mummy portraits, preserved in the exceptionally dry conditions of Egypt, provide the bulk of surviving panel painting from the Imperial Roman period. About 900 face or bust portraits survive. The Severan Tondo, also from Egypt, is one of the handful of non funerary Greco Roman specimens to survive. Wood has always been the normal support for the icons of Byzantine art and the later Orthodox traditions, the earliest of which date from the 5th or 6th centuries, and to the oldest panel paintings which seem to be of the highest contemporary quality. Encaustic and tempera are the two techniques used in antiquity. Encaustic largely ceased to be used after the early Byzantine icons although there seem from literary references to have been some panel paintings produced in Western Europe through the centuries between late antiquity and the Romanesque period, and Byzantine icons were imported, there are next to no survivals in an unaltered state. In the 12th century panel painting experienced a revival because of new liturgical practices. The priest and congregation were now on the same side of the altar, leaving the space behind the altar free for the display of a holy image, and thus altar decorations were in demand. The earliest forms of panel painting were dossals, altar fronts and crucifixes. All were painted with religious images, commonly the Christ or the Virgin, with the saints appropriate to the dedication of the church, and the local town or diocese, or to the donor. Donor portraits including members of the donor's family are also often shown, usually kneeling to the side. They were for some time a cheaper alternative to the far more prestigious equivalents in metalwork, decorated with gems, enamels and perhaps ivory figures, most of which have long been broken up for their valuable materials. Painted panels for altars are most numerous in Spain, especially Catalonia, which is explained by the poverty of the country at this time, as well as the lack of Reformation iconoclasm. The 13th and 14th centuries in Italy were a great period of panel painting, mostly altarpieces or other religious works. However, it is estimated that of all the panel paintings produced there, 99.9% .9 have been lost. The vast majority of early Netherlandish paintings are on panel, and these include most of the earliest portraits, such as those by Jan van Eyck, and some other secular scenes. However, one of the earliest surviving oils on canvas is a French Madonna with angels of about 1410 in the Gemelde Gallery, Berlin, which is very early indeed for oil painting also. In these works the frame and panel are sometimes a single piece of wood, as with Portrait of a Man by Van Eyck, where the frame was also painted, including an inscription done illusionistically to resemble carving. By the 15th century with the increased wealth of Europe, and later the appearance of humanism, and a changing attitude about the function of art and patronage, panel painting went in new directions. Secular art opened the way to the creation of chests, 
painted bed, birth trays and other furniture. Many such works are now detached and hung framed on walls in museums. Many double-sided wings of altarpieces have also been sawn into two one-sided panels. Canvas took over from panel in Italy by the first half of the 16th century, a change led by Montegna and the artists of Venice. In the Netherlands the change took about a century longer, and panel paintings remained common, especially in northern Europe. Even after the cheaper and more portable canvas had become the main support medium, the young Rubens and many other painters preferred it for the greater precision that could be achieved with a totally solid support, and many of his most important works also used it, even for paintings over four meters long in one dimension. His panels are of notoriously complicated construction, containing as many as 17 pieces of wood. For smaller cabinet paintings, copper sheets were another rival support, from the end of the 16th century, used by many artists including Adam Elsheimer. Many Dutch painters of the Golden Age used panel for their small works, including Rembrandt on occasion. By the 18th century it had become unusual to paint on panel, except for small works to be inset into furniture, and the like. But, for example, the National Gallery in London has two Goya portraits on panel. Many other painting traditions also painted, and still paint, on wood. But the term is usually only used to refer to the Western tradition described above. Panel construction and preparation. The technique is known to us through Senino Senini's The Craftsman's Handbook published in 1390, and other sources. It changed little over the centuries. It was a laborious and painstaking process. A carpenter would construct a solid wood piece the size of the panel needed. Usually a radial cut piece was preferred, with the outer sap wood excluded. In Italy it was usually seasoned poplar, willow or linden. It would be planed and sanded and if needed, joined with other pieces to obtain the desired size and shape. The wood would be coated with a mixture of animal skin glues and resin and covered with linen. This might be done by a specialist, or in the artist's studio. Once the size had dried, layer upon layer of gesso would be applied, each layer sanded down before the next applied, sometimes as many as 15 layers, before a smooth hard surface emerged, not unlike ivory. This stage was not necessarily done after the 16th century, or darker grounds were used. Painting techniques Once the panel construction was complete, the design was laid out, usually in charcoal. The usual ancient painting technique was in caustic, used at Alfaium and in the earliest surviving Byzantine icons, which are at the St. Catherine's Monastery. This uses heated who acts as the medium for the pigments. This was replaced before the end of first millennium by tempera, which uses an egg yolk medium. Using small brushes dipped in a mixture of pigment and egg yolk, the paint was applied in very small, almost transparent, brush strokes. Thin layers of paint would be used to create volumetric forms. By the beginning of the 15th century, oil painting was developed. This was more tolerant, and allowed the exceptional detail of early Netherlandish art. This used a very painstaking multi-layered technique, where the painting, or a particular part of it, had to be left for a couple of days for one layer to dry before the next was applied. Conservation and scientific analysis Wood panels, especially if kept with too little humidity, often warp and crack with age, and from the 19th century. When reliable techniques were developed, many have been transferred to canvas or modern board supports. Wood panel is now rather more useful to art historians than canvas, and in recent decades there has been great progress in extracting this information, and many fakes discovered and mistaken datings corrected. Specialists can identify the tree species used, which varied according to the area where the painting was made. Carbon dating techniques can give an approximate date range, and dendrochronology sequences have been developed for the main source areas of timber for panels. Italian paintings used local or sometimes Dalmatian wood, most often poplar, but including chestnut, walnut, oak and other woods. 
The Netherlands ran short of local timber early in the 15th century, and most early Netherlandish masterpieces are Baltic coke, often Polish, cut north of Warsaw and shipped down the Vistula, across the Baltic to the Netherlands. Southern German painters often used pine, and mahogany imported into Europe was used by later painters, including examples by Rembrandt and Goya. In theory, dendrochronology gives an exact felling date, but in practice allowances have to be made for a seasoning period of several years, and a small panel may be from the center of the tree, with no way of knowing how many rings outside the panel there were. So dendrochronological conclusions tend to be expressed as of terminus post-QUEM, or an earliest possible date, with a tentative estimate of an actual date, that may be 20 or more years later. The so-called Panel Paintings Initiative is a multi-year project in collaboration between the Getty Conservation Institute, the Getty Foundation, and the J. Paul Getty Museum. The Panel Paintings Initiative is a response to the growing recognition that significant collections of paintings on wood panels may be at risk in coming decades due to the waning numbers of conservators and craftspeople with the highly specialized skills required for the conservation of these complex works of art. Types of wood. Artists would typically use wood native to the region. Albrecht Dürer, for example, painted on poplar when he was in Venice and on oak when in the Netherlands and southern Germany. Leonardo da Vinci used oak for his paintings in France. Hans Baldung Grien and Hans Holbein used oak while working in southern Germany and England. In the Middle Ages, spruce and lime were used in the Upper Rhine and often in Bavaria. Outside of the Rhineland, softwood was mainly used. Of a group of 20 Norwegian altar frontals from the Gothic period, 14 were made of fir, 2 of oak, and 4 of pine. Large altars made in Denmark during the 15th century use oak for the figures as well as for the painted wings. Lime was popular with Albrecht Altdorfer, Baldung Grien, Christoph Amberger, Dürer, and Lucas Kranich the Elder. Kranich often used beech wood, an unusual choice. In Northern Europe, poplar is very rarely found, but walnut and chestnut are not uncommon. In the northeast and south, coniferous trees such as spruce, and various types of fir, and pine have been used. Firwood is shown to have been used in the Upper and Middle Rhine, Augsburg, Nuremberg, and Saxony. Pinewood was used mainly in Tyrol and beechwood only in Saxony. However, in general, oak was the most common substrate used for panel making in the Low Countries, northern Germany, and the Rhineland around Cologne. In France, until the 17th century, most panels were made from oak, although a few made of walnut and poplar have been found. The oak favored as a support by the painters of the northern school was, however, not always of local origin. In the 17th century about 4,000 full-grown oak trees were needed to build a medium-sized merchant ship, thus, imported wood was necessary. Oak coming from Königsberg as well as Gdansk is often found among works by Flemish and Dutch artists from the 15th through the 17th centuries. The origin can be established by the patterns of growth rings. In the last decade of the 17th century, Wilhelmus Bloes, a Dutch writer on painting techniques, considered oak to be the most useful wooden substrate on which to paint. However, exceptions are seen rather early in the 17th century. Sometimes walnut, pearwood, cedarwood, or Indian woods were used. Mahogany was already in use by a number of painters during the first decades of the 17th century and was used often in the Netherlands in the 19th century. Even so, when canvas or copper was not used, the main oeuvre of the northern school was painted on oak panels.